Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to talk about what we're going to discuss this afternoon. And that is exactly what the slide says, customer loyalty. How to retain our clients, and when they leave, how do we get them back? Okay? So that is actually something that I think many companies are afraid of. We're afraid to talk about it. Why would anyone possibly leave a company that's doing an excellent job at products, service, and support, right? The fact is, many companies don't do that. So today, we're going to talk about raising the bar and committing, delivering on the promises that we make to people. So on October 14th, 2012, the name Felix Baumgartner might be familiar to you. So Felix and his team operating the Red Bull Stratus had done research and preparation for more than two years. So the Red Bull Stratus was a capsule held underneath a hydrogen balloon and that balloon would carry him higher than any human being had ever gone. That in itself is a feat, right? Balloon powered. But the more miraculous thing is when he got up there and he was in his safe place, he was asked to jump out. He was in his comfort zone and he was asked to jump out. On the way down, he was traveling 833.9 miles an hour, just his body. Imagine that. Okay, 90 minutes up, a few minutes down. Really scary stuff. So on the way down, what he did is he traveled faster than the speed of sound. He traveled faster than any human being had ever done, just their body only, and in doing so, he set four world records. So you could say that Felix Baumgartner, he fell to greater success. He was free falling to greater success. And if you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So, next slide. So then we have to ask ourselves, how can we free fall to success? Next slide, please. And are our customers growing? Are we growing in those relationships? Or are those relationships dying on the vine? If you have a yard and you spend time landscaping and taking care of your lawn, you know what I'm about to talk about, is that you can have a tree or a bush die and you don't know it until it's dead, right? Because a lot of that stuff's going on underground. So in my neighborhood, picture it, probably not unlike anyone else's neighborhood, you have this unspoken competition about who has the best lawn. Do you cross cut it? Every week you cut it a different direction so you don't get tracks in it and, and is yours greener than the guy next to you? Well in my neighborhood we have that unspoken contest and I'd like to think that I win it most years. The guy across the street from me likes to think that he's competitive too, but here's the fact, he doesn't water it, he doesn't fertilize it, he doesn't love and care and nurture it, and therefore it doesn't respond, right? So he has these great expectations, but he doesn't provide the 100% input into it to get the output that he desires, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Are you expecting relationships with your clients that are way above the actual input that you're providing? Now's the time for us to dive into that and think about that. So do our expectations, do their expectations line up with what we're investing? Okay. So how many people in the room have children? Okay. Lots of us, right? So when they're little, next slide, when they're little, does this sound familiar? You're talking to someone and it's daddy, 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 pulling on your pants or your suit, right? <clears throat> what? I'm busy. Stop. I'm busy. How many times do we do that to our clients and not intentionally do it because little Johnny is important, right? One of the most important things in your life. So that's our client. How many times have they come to us tugging, trying to get our attention so that they can work with us to get the results that we all expect, right? So 
so, next, uh, next slide. So why do clients leave? Why do customers leave your organization? Why do families and business partners go separate ways? Anyone? They're unhappy? Excuse me? They think someone's better? Not getting expected results. Not getting expected results. I think it comes down to communication, right? Who's talking and who's listening? So people slip away. Relationships slip away. So find out what your customers really want and then invest exactly what you need to get the results. So what we find out is that today, customer retention probably wasn't the first thing on your mind when you walked in, and nor was it the first thing when you started playing this video. It wasn't the first thing you thought about. But it's happening every day. It needs to be on the mind of small business owners, large business owners, board of directors, and those people working startups. It's real. So we need to focus on it. If we have our head in the sand today about customer retention, tomorrow you'll walk in the front door and you'll be without clients that you thought you had a tremendous relationship with. Okay. So why do people leave? 68% leave because they are unhappy. 14% are unhappy with the product or service that they are receiving because it doesn't align with what they purchased. And 9% actually go to the competition. Imagine for a moment if 9% of your business, no matter what your growth is, 9% of your clients leave every year. Now these are studies that are from the U.S. government, Department of Commerce, Small Business Association, so they're real and it's happening every day. Okay? So if you're watching this, if you're looking at the slides, you know that bringing on a client is five to seven times more expensive than it is to keep one. To simply do what we promised to keep them, right? So today while you're listening, someone, right now, while you're in here, someone's trying to steal your clients. Somebody's trying to take your customers for a lot of different reasons, right? So what we have to do is we have to make them love us. We gotta give them some love. We gotta get to their level. If it's the little child, you gotta get down on one knee and talk to them and listen to them. So what we want our customers to do, what everybody wants them to do, is we want the customer to go to bed at night and we're the last thing they think about. And when they wake up in the morning, they're so glad that we're here and they can eat breakfast and have a peace of mind and know that we're providing exactly what they bought, right? So knowing your product or services is more than worth the price. Next slide. So anyone ever purchase a car? Okay. Anyone, and there are a lot of great sales professionals in the automotive industry. The first time I purchased a car, I drove on the lot, got out of my really poor shape vehicle, and there was a salesman right there. And he said, are you looking for a vehicle today? And I said, yeah, I'm just not exactly sure what I want. And he said, trust me, I'll take care of you. So I believe that if we have to ask people to trust us, it's uh, not a good thing because we earn it. And we also need to understand that when people give you their trust, they give you the ability to change their life. True? Okay, so trust begins with a relationship. It begins with a real relationship. If we're through the hustle and bustle of business and we don't have time, we're not managing our time, and we're not focusing on what's best for our, our customers, then the trust will fade away if we ever had it. Okay? So trust begins and ends way beyond a handshake. It goes way beyond knowing the person's name and recognizing their voice when they call you without caller ID. It goes way beyond that. What's their family consist of? When's their birthday? What's the anniversary of their business? Right? How do they get to where they want to be? How do, we, how do they get to where they are today? Right? Those are important. Dive in, become embedded in them, 
and the relationship that you have with them. It becomes personal. And it absolutely has to be something that we're passionate about doing. It's not an eight to five thing, a relationship. Did you agree? Whether it's personal or business, it's not eight to five. And the relationships that we don't have today that we did years ago were strictly because they became eight to five. We compartmentalized them, and sooner or later, something became more important. So what we have to do is we have to uncover the values of our clients, uncover what's really important to them, and we have to make them our own. Number one rule of selling is find out what's important to your client and help provide it, right? Get on the same page, have the same beliefs, the same philosophy, the same passion and attitude and desire that they do. Just make them yours. So how do you build relationships in your personal life? Is that the same way you do it? Anyone? Same way you do it. So what makes us think that if we want to absolutely become embedded in our customers and we want them to rely on us, that it should be any different in business? Genuine interest and caring wins every time. Okay. Next slide. So what we do have to ask ourselves if we're relevant in our clients' lives, in their business. Are we relevant? Are we strictly providing a staple, a good and ser service that others provide and there's no differentiator? There's no value add? That'd be a scary place to be, right? So if you're making widgets, you want to make the best widget that there is? You just have to be the best. So have you ever heard of statistics when somebody's rattling it off in the nightly news and they'll say the average person in America does this, the average person in America does that? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you consider yourself to be average? Have you ever been average? Have you ever wanted to be average? How about your clients? Did they come to us and they just want the average output that we have? So when does it become okay? It's never okay. So we're not average. And we don't want to be. So we want to be relevant to our customers in any industry. Become relevant, form the relationship that we've talked about, and they absolutely need to need you. That's where we want to get them. They need to need you. Are you critical to their success? Can they function without you? That's the mindset, that's the space that we need to be. So are we doing, are you doing in your industry everything that you can to ensure that they're dependent upon you and that you're relevant? Okay, next slide. The first thing we have to do in order to do that is to set, set some client expectations. November 2nd, 2014, Nick Walenda, part of the Walenda family, high wire acrobat, aerialist folks, family, the long tradition of doing this and doing amazing feats. Well, Nick had a walk in the city of Chicago, 500 feet up in the air between two towers. So he went up the elevator, gets on the top of the building, has all his support staff, and he, with a balance bar, walked across the wire, and it took him just under seven minutes. Amazing. 500 feet in the air, equivalent to two city blocks. Wind blowing in Chicago in November. Finishes on the other side, seven minutes, awesome. Went down the elevator, ran across the street, went in the same tower, went up the same elevator, hopped on the same wire, and did it again. Not in seven minutes, but at one minute and 17 seconds. Blindfolded. Blindfolded. <laughs> Cut off five minutes because he had the right expectations. So I think he was padness himself. His performance in the crowd was going crazy. 50,000 people on the street. Right? Well, cool, he did it in seven minutes. How could anybody ever do that? And then he comes back and does it in one minute, 17 seconds, blindfolded. That's crazy. So, pretty amazing stuff. So set our customer expectations early. Nick did that. 
I'm confident he knew he could do the first walk in seven minutes, six minutes, five minutes, right? This is all part of it. But what he really wanted to do, to do is to deliver something that was so far above what anybody else could do. And in doing that, he set the highest world record of a high wire act. Okay? Pretty amazing. Amazing stuff. So I got to believe that that's kind of a form of customer service for him. He's got fans. He's got people that are following him. Right? Groupies. <laughs> and 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 they got to believe that they were all charged up. I mean, compared to seven minutes watching him from the ground and a kink in your neck to 1.17 was like that. It's crazy. So challenge yourself and your customers to be better. We have to plan for success to do that. We have to plan for it. We have to anticipate the wind. We have to anticipate the environment that could happen that could change that direction and change our plan. We have to review it often, right? I don't care what industry you're in. If you're providing someone with a basic part, a fastener, it doesn't matter what, you have to have a review and make sure that it's always working well. And not only that, but things change. So maybe there will be a better fastener. Maybe there'll be a better software solution. Maybe there'll be another manufacturing technique that will absolutely change their company, change their industry, and bring you closer and closer together with them. So the other thing that we have to do with our customers, most important, is every day challenge them to challenge you. It's not a one-way street. Do you agree with me? The minute that it becomes only what I'm doing for them in a customer-vendor type of relationship is the minute we lose power. And we have to continually prove to ourselves and to them our validity with that relationship. It needs to be both ways. If you have regular scheduled meetings with your customers, if you're in front of them at conferences, trade shows, regular meetings, annual meetings, challenge them. Send them expectations and an agenda of talking points that will get your relationship to a new level. That's how we come closer and closer together. So we want to set some customer expectations, right? So we do that. And then what we find out is that when it's a new customer and it's a new relationship, it's fun, right? It's exciting. Everybody wins. It's like little kid t-ball. Everybody wins. Love you guys. You're so much better than the other company I worked with. But guess what happens? Right, that's the honeymoon phase of a relationship, the bad day will come, there will be a mistake, there will be a problem that we need to anticipate what the solution is. And so my recommendation to anyone in any industry, anticipate the tough times. Talk with your clients about, hey, we're getting along great. Our relationship is fantastic. We're delivering our product and you know what? You're even paying us for it. That's a good thing. That's basic relationship in business. But when the bad day comes, when something doesn't ship on time or our quality is low or the results aren't what they expected, what will it be like? What will our client meeting look like? How will our customers view us? In most businesses, I believe that what happens is immediately there's finger pointing. Immediately, your customer says, here's what you didn't deliver. True? So let's talk about that ahead of time. During the honeymoon phase, let's talk about it and say, when the bad day comes, I know we're getting along great right now. Love you guys. You love us. We're feeling good. We're sitting around in a circle singing Kumbaya, and that's fantastic. But when the bad day comes, what are we going to do? How are we going to work together? And that's the most critical point, right? How do you perform in a relationship when the road is tough? Anticipate that. Talk about it with all of your clients. Talk about it with the people who work for you and work with you. When we start to struggle, how are we going to buckle down? How are we going to get lower to the ground and how are we going to be more efficient? How are we going to blast our way through it and use it as an opportunity for growth and development? Right? So let's just talk about the big elephant in the room. Right? Okay. 
Also with an organization, we need to understand that everyone with the organization, all the way down to the person that may empty your trash, they contribute to that client relationship. Everyone does. If you don't feel you're important, know you are. If you're not sharing with everyone on your teams and everyone within your company that they are special, that they matter, and that they're here for a reason, you're going to lose them. Because we have two types of customers, internal and external. They can all go somewhere else and get exactly what they get from you. Okay. Next thing we want to do is we have to know our, co our competition. Are you it? Are you the only show in town? It's good if you are. But I guarantee you there's not an industry where there isn't competition. There's not an industry where there's somebody sleeping around the corner and waiting for the opportune time. Years ago when Southwest Airlines started, none of the other airlines took them seriously. None of the airports took them seriously. They couldn't even get gates. They couldn't even fly into airports. What a difference a couple years makes. Now not only are they a reputable airline, they are a case study for how to run an airline globally. So learn about the sleeper companies in your industry. Learn about those people that want to grow up and be just like you and they want to be just like the company you work for. Because someday they will be. And if you aren't looking further ahead, they will steamroll you and run right past you before you even realize it. Okay? You know why they would do that? You know what gives them the element of success to have that much growth and that much forward trajectory? What's the reason? Passion. Because they want it more than you do. Something happens between startup and mature company. When people and organizations start experiencing success, that they get into some sort of a comfort zone plateau. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're the leaders. Yeah, we have all the market share. Okay. Well, it happens in personal life, business life, sports, government, you name it. There is no sector that's immune to this. Someday that will change. In some days, the leaders will not be on top. They'll change roles. Okay. One way that you can help do this is to empower yourself to be one of these two, and I'd encourage the latter, right? You can be a superstar in your industry. You can be a superstar in your sport or in your craft. Superstars, hmm, let's see, like Michael Jordan, good example. Because of what they do and how they do it and the feats that they've gone to and the things that they've done, we put them up on a pedestal and we praise them for that, and they stand up there and say, thank you, you're right, I am great. But then there's also heroes, second category. Heroes are the same way. Great accomplishments, we recognize them for what they've done. Fantastic, we put them up on a pedestal, but you know what they do? They get down on one knee and help the rest of us up. So in an industry, when you're talking about competition, it's not only how you can beat your competition, how could you partner with them? How could you partner with them? How could you propel your industry into something greater than it is today? There are businesses partnering with companies that they didn't like before, but there's a synergy of something that brings them together for a common good and more growth potential than they can, they can achieve themselves. Okay? Do, your comp do your competitors have features that you don't. Products, services, just think about it. Do they have features that you don't? Find your edge, leverage what you have, and find ways to grow it beyond your wildest imagination. Then repeat, kind of like shampooing in the morning. Next slide. So, <laughs> Thank you.
So what we want to do is we want to take a look at this and say, we want to be in an industry, if we have customers of any kind, we want them to be dependent upon us, correct? The only way they'll do that is if we are the expert. What's it take to be the expert? What's it take to be an expert in any field? Great knowledge in that field. Great knowledge in the field. Industry knowledge. Best practices. All of it. Hard work. Everything all wrapped up into one, right? So we have to absolutely be the trusted advisor. The only way to get you there is to know more than everyone else to be able to communicate it in a way that people will understand and not only that, but they'll follow. They'll follow. Then when you're the trusted advisor and you come across a game changer for one of your clients, pick up the phone, give them advice, and stand right there behind it that they absolutely need to act on it. Right? It's not a sales job. It is exactly what they expect from a true advisor, a true expert. Okay. So that, if they're waiting by the phone for your call to tell them what to do, to share with them the next great idea, to share with them how you're going to help move them along, you've got to believe that you've made your way well on your way to becoming a trusted expert and a trusted advisor no matter what your industry is. Okay. The oldest retention tactic in the world is discounting. Okay. When we don't deliver, we cut the price. When our quality is bad, we cut, cut the price. When the product doesn't show up on time, we pay for shipping. Vicious circle. Who wins in that scenario? Customer wins every time. And you know what? If we don't deliver on the quality, we don't deliver on the product, and we don't get it there on time, they can go somewhere else for that. Anywhere. So discounting is not a means to a positive end. You're on your way to losing your clients if you, abs <laughs> if you have to use discounting as a tactic. Okay? There's a story about, call it the Schwinn bicycle story. So Schwinn, when it was founded, was the best bicycle on the market. Anybody in the room have Schwinn? Okay, good bicycle. So there were a lot of other competitors that came on the market and said, two wheels and a frame and a chain and handlebars, brakes. That's about it. We could make bikes. So there was a story of a family who was pinching pennies. And they had three sons, and they decided that Yep, because we only drive the car on Sundays, and the boys need to get to school, and it's a long ways, so instead of making them walk you know, uphill both ways, that we'll buy them bicycles. But Schwinn's cost too much, so we're going to buy something much lower in price, which they did. Over the next year, what happened was the bicycles were constantly in repair, chains breaking, handlebars not sticking, seats going up and down, not straying straight. You get the picture, right? A year later, the family went out and bought the Schwinn bicycles for all three. Schwinn decided that they would rather explain price once rather than quality forever. Right? Discounting is not the answer to future relationships and strengthen the relationships. It's a temporary fix, and they're on their way out the door. You just don't know it yet. Okay? So what we want to do is be proactive. I'd like to say that we want to form sticky relationships. Okay. So anybody familiar with duct tape? Duct tape. It can do a lot of things. Amazing things. So the deal about duct tape is if you've ever folded it over and then tried to get it apart, it's virtually impossible. That's the relationship you want, right? Put a roll of duct tape on your desk, and that will remind you that that's the kind of relationships you want to have with your clients, right? They're never going to tear apart. And once they're bonded to a surface, you'll have a hard time getting them off, right? Loyalty is what we're talking about, not tape. 
Loyalty bonds the relationship together. The things that you do, diving into the values of your clients, the interest that they have, the product, the industry, the service, so on, everything that's all wrapped up into one is bound together with an element <coughs> called loyalty. So give them value. Give them valuable products, services, information, and all sorts of other value adds that if you were sitting on the other side of the phone or on the other side of the computer, wouldn't you want that too? And isn't what they bought that what they bought when they originally came on board? Okay, next slide. So ever wonder why or how companies that you look up to continue to pump out new products, new services, and along with that, they keep pumping out new relationships that are just as quality as the ones before. How do they do it? How do they do it? They automate. Nice. <laughs> okay, your vision's working. <laughs> so, <laughs> they invest in automation, right? They standardize their processes. They decide, here's where the bar is of expectation. And instead of setting their automation and all their process delivery goals right there, it's like running that race. Well, they actually want to finish beyond that, right? Build your systems higher than client expectations. Automation is critical. If you're not automated, you're on your way out of business. I'm pretty confident that there's no industry in the world that wouldn't be better with automation, that isn't surviving because of automation, and isn't growing because of it. Okay? It's an investment in each and every one of your clients, and if you have automation, it will change the world, and it will change the relationships that you have. It'll bring more people to you. Hire the support staff that's needed to hit that ball out of the park and provide the necessary tools that your people need to do a great job and service your clients, and you'll never look back. So leverage that automation to win big with your current and clients-to-be. Because they're all clients-to-be. If you don't have them, you're going to get them. Right? Explain what your automation is. Explain your systems in detail to all of your clients and let them know how you manage. What are the tools that you have in-house to ensure that they get this level of quality, that they meet, we meet the expectations that they want. Right? Let them know the details of it. And nobody likes to talk about accounts receivable when they're your accounts receivable. But if you explain the process that your company operates within, how you collect money, how you bill, how your invoicing system works, who's involved with that, and you introduce them to those people, the whole process now becomes something that's easy to talk about. Okay. Next slide. So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand some key performance indicators, and they might be different for industries, right? Depending upon what you're selling, pay attention to some key performance indicators. If you are, have a client that's been a long relationship and they're ordering tons of product from you, regular purchase orders, and you skip one, they skip one, and one week, just like clockwork, it never shows up, there's your sign. Something's not right. If you feel in a relationship that something's not as steady as it used to be. Maybe they miss a client call. Maybe they reschedule a customer meeting. Maybe you don't get a communication from them like you normally did. There's an indicator. Jump on that. Really important that I talk with you today because we missed our call and you're important to me. We care about you, is everything okay? That's a great time, any time to do a gut check, right? Do a gut check with your clients, with your customers. Make sure that you're in line. Ask the tough questions. And if it's bad, ask for the bad. Share with me what's on your mind, and we'll fix it. Okay. So you have countless opportunities every day to engage with your clients. It's not just an email. Years ago, there was a major airline commercial on TV and it was about this company that whose they were the rock stars of their industry. 
And over a short period of time, they got used to, at that time we didn't have email, we didn't have the internet, but we had telephones and we had fax, and fax was the way to go. So you'd write a note and you'd fax it to them. Well, slowly, this company relied on a fax relationship and a telephone relationship, and the face-to-face -face went out the window. They didn't even realize it happened. So at a major company meeting, the leadership of that company rolled out an airline ticket for every single one of their people. Because they said, if there's a problem, we send a fax. <laughs> if there's a good thing, we send a fax. Right? The relationship shipped away, slipped away. And so what they did is they gave an airline ticket to everyone. And everyone hit the road, and they had face-to-face carrying sessions with their customers and they made it better, right? So automation can speed you up in so many ways. It can make us more efficient, but it can also tear away at those real relationships we talked about earlier. It can tear away and you won't even know it. But they'll know it. Hey, when I signed up and started getting product from you, I got all sorts of calls from people. I met everybody on your team, and now that we're embedded and you guys are producing for us, and we're a mature relationship, we don't, we don't hear from you anymore. And we can get that from anyone. Okay. Next. So, anybody have children that are on the internet in the room? Okay. So I hear this a lot, I say this a lot, you're on the internet again? Your clients, your customers are just like your children. They're on the internet all the time. The information, super, mega, whatever you want to call it, highway, it's the place to get information. It's the place to find out who the competition is. If I'm buying a widget from company A, I guarantee you in 10 minutes I can find 20 other companies I can get it from, right? And I can begin business with them right now. So there are blogs, there's social media, there's all sorts of avenues within the internet that can bring us closer together. They can tie us into our customers. They can allow us to be better, and they can allow us to be connected. Social media, other internet avenues allow us to identify needs, solve problems, Again, come closer together, come closer together with our customers. Next. So how can we reach higher? Again, I talked about this. I said that when you have a customer come on board, usually that's when everybody's clicking on all cylinders, right? That's the best we're going to be is the first day that they come into the building. And when they leave, big sigh of relief. They head down the elevator out in the parking lot, and we're like, so glad we made it through that. That really went well, didn't it? Right? Well, the fact is, we should feel like that every day. We should feel that urgency every day. Don't you want your... And when they got out in their rental car and they're driving to the airport, are you hoping and thinking that they feel the same way? Shouldn't they feel that way every day? So every day is a new beginning in business and life, right? If you wake up on the right side of the dirt, it's a good thing. And if your client customers wake up on the right side of the dirt, they know they still have work to do. They have goals and vision and a mission for their business. And you know what? The day before that, they gave that opportunity to you. So now we wake up the next morning and we still have the same opportunity. Do we have the energy, the urgency, the passion, the motivation, right? Are we going to deliver just like they're in our office every day? And if we did that, wouldn't it be different than a fax, a phone call, an email? It'd be different. Okay. Next. So listen. Some of what I've talked about so far is how to listen, how to really listen. You ever say, talk to somebody, and, and they're, you're having a conversation, and you really feel like, they're only listening to you so they could talk more? Or they interrupt your conversation? It's a hard habit to break because you might have something that's just important on the topic that they're talking about, right? But like pinch yourself, 
bite your tongue, whatever you got to do, right? Because, oh, wait, 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 before you, before you end, ask me that, I already have the answer for it. Well, you know what? That's really cool that you have the answer for it, but you just told them, you just illustrated to them that you're not going to let, don't want to listen to them. What they had to say wasn't important. So what we want to do is, in business, is you want to listen to them, and one way that you can do that is through customer surveys. A lot of companies out there do surveys. First thing when you're a customer that's great when you get one is, gee, I have the opportunity to give some feedback. The next thought in their mind is, will it really matter? And if I really say what is really on my mind, will my service get better or worse? Now take that further. A company, you as a company, get that information back in those completed surveys. What are you going to do with it? Yep, got these surveys back. Goes into spreadsheet. Completed that task. Thank you very much. Now let's, let's get back to business again because we have more important things to do. If that's what we do, client's on the way out the door. And they know it. So when we get those surveys back, number one, what do we do with that information? How do we compile it? How do we teach our team, educate them on what customers are saying? If there's bad things, it should hurt. It should bother us, and it should give us pain that we don't like, and it should cause us to build a plan to get better. The next thing we need to do is thank you for the survey. Here's the things that you pointed out to us. First of all, we're sorry that that happened. Or we're elated that you think so much of us. Sign here for another contract extension. Right? But it could be that if there's a bad, if there's bad input on that customer survey, bad feedback. Wow, it hurts. Well, isn't that an opportunity to sign another agreement also? Because that gets us right back to where we were when we started the relationship. Right? The pressure's on. Now we're back to that initial client meeting where everything was clicking and we were giving them our best. Okay. So identify your soft spots in business. They're all there. There's not a business out there that doesn't have a soft spot that needs to be addressed. Okay. Most times it's a squeaky wheel gets the grease, whether it's a small company startup or whether it's a Fortune 200 company. They all have them. And they all will pivot to the path of least resistance and to the things that they think need immediate attention. And I guarantee you they're not customer driven. Okay. Practice active listening. So, Mr. Client, what, you're, what I'm hearing you say is X. Is that correct? So if I could take care of that, if I could fix that, if I could make that better, then that's a way for us to get back to where we were clicking along together pretty good. Is that correct? Yes. Great. So as a result of that, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what we're going to do together. Does that sound fair? Kind of rolls, doesn't it? A little bit of conflict management there. So practice active listening at every opportunity. If you're in sales, you're always thinking ahead. While the client's talking, you're always thinking about the next thing you can say and the next pivot opportunity and how we can close. A lot of ways to have active listening. Just don't blow past the opportunity to make additional sales. Right. Do you ever go on a on a car lot, like I said earlier, and to buy a car, has the person ever said, okay, you're looking for a vehicle, would you like two or three? Is there anybody else in your family that needs another one today? Because I could do a deal today. Anybody ever ask you that? I've never had that happen. So Sam Walton, who founded Walmart, used to have his overalls on, right? He'd walk into a dealership. One time he did, he drove a blue, rusty, old Ford pickup. Walked into a dealership one time. They didn't know who he was. He didn't care. This guy doesn't have any money, and he walked out because nobody took care of him. Drove his rusty pickup till he died. Okay? Assumptions. Right? So just for fun, the next time you go to buy a vehicle, tell him you want two. 
see what kind of deal you get, and then as soon as the deal's on, on the paper, just say, I only want one. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what if you do all the things that we've talked about, and your clients still leave? Next. Okay? What if they leave? No matter what you do, no matter what you did, they still left. You get upset? I've done everything. I did everything and you still left. You took everything I had and more and you still left. First thing you got to do is smile because it happens. Next thing you have to do is make the decision that you're going to take a valiant effort and get them back. If they were worth it when they came on, they're worth it now. And the only reason they're leaving is there must have been some sort of a disconnect. So now is the time to gauge that and to fix it. It's time to build a bridge. Time to build a bridge. I used to have a gentleman I worked with and he said, if you have a problem, build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> fix it. So normally what business would do is, man, we tried everything and these client left. On to the next one, got to sell more. What if we go ahead and harvest and mine from the people and the companies that left because we didn't do something right? What do you have to lose? You call them and ask them back. What do you have to lose? Not a whole lot. So what we have to do first is, next slide, so we have to be a part of that solution. Okay, We want to take responsibility for it. Even if you weren't involved in it, even if you're the new guy on the job, that's really a great place to be, by the way. If you're the new guy, you should be, or gal, you should be the one that handles all the problems that they have, handle all the problem clients, because you weren't here. I wasn't here then when that happened, but what I can share with you is I can fix it now. I can't do anything about what happened in the past. All I can do is take care of you now and let's work together to see if we can fix it. Let's come back together. Because I've looked at the file, I've looked at the notes, I've looked at the results and I know we were successful and if we weren't, here's why. Okay? So it's, when somebody leaves, it's not what happens, it's what you do with it. Don't take it personally, or maybe you should. So how will you, at that moment, improve the moment? Remember the three things that reasons that people leave? 68% of the people leave because they're unhappy, right? 14% leave because they're unhappy with the product or service. 9% go to the competition, okay? So somebody's going to leave and 10% of them are going to the competition. Not on my watch, they're not. Okay? So how will you improve that moment? So the first thing we want to do is we want to say, I'm sorry th things didn't go well. Really am. Take ownership of it. It doesn't matter who you are with the organization. Take ownership of it. Capture that moment. Listen. Most powerful words in the English language are, I need your help. Three words. Never in my life have I said those words and had somebody walk on by. So wouldn't that be pretty fantastic if you are in front of a client that left, customer that left, or you're on the phone and the first things you say is, I need your help in understanding what happened, and I also need your help in bringing us back together again. What's wrong with that? I think they'll take a moment and pause and wonder what they just heard. <laughs> Please share me with me what happened. All that you know. And, it, and if you have a question for me on the details of it and I don't know it, I'll get you the answer and I'll call you right back. We'll work together to comfortably fit this into your business plan for us to work again together as one. Does that sound fair? So everybody in the room is shaking their heads yes? Okay. 
So you're all retained customers. Next slide. So this is, again, be apologetic. In your personal life or business, we come into conflicts, and sometimes we didn't don't get along with people. Somebody did something that hurt us or wronged us, personal or business. And so when the apology comes, if they're really not injured, they go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? Or would it be like, the apology you really want is like them getting on their knee. I'm really sorry, grabbing your hand, I'm sorry. Your leg. Right? I'm sorry. I really am. I'm genuinely sorry. I can't believe that happened. And all I can tell you is right now, there'll be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm listening to you. I care about you. We want you back. I kind of think that breaks down the defense mechanism for them, right? For once, somewhere along the line, there was a disconnect between when we had that honeymoon relationship to when they walked out the door. We missed it. We blew right past it because we got all caught up in the business. So what we want to do is we want to let them know that you'll personally create a solution for them and that you do take this personally. I'm going to create a solution that's going to help us never pass the way we did before. We're never going to have that problem. We're never going to make that mistake again. And remember at the very beginning of our discussion here today, I talked about when you're in the honeymoon phase, and you want to talk about when things go bad? This is a perfect example of that. When things go bad, how are we going to handle it? So now that when we work through this scenario right now and I get you back, this is proof that we can work through a tough time together. So if it ever happens again, don't leave. Let's you and I fix it. Let's get stronger, right? I'm going to take personal responsibility for this and everything else after this, and I'm going to take care of you. What's the most important part about all of that that I said? Got to deliver. Got to deliver. And your team, the people next to you, support staff, whatever, have to be on the same page, right? So again, provide that personal assurance and then deliver. Next slide. So what do clients want? One of the fears we have with customer service is that customers want more than we can deliver. When if we communicate effectively, we explain, ask questions, listen, most likely isn't the case. Okay? But we have to ask the simple question, what would you like me to do? What would you like me to do? How can I make this right for you? What can we do together? Right? Most cases, they're going to they're gonna ask you for less than you thought you were going to have to deliver. Okay. Next slide. So present a clear plan of action, right? We want to make certain that they know that we're going to correct the problem. 95% of the things of making things right revolve around communicating the plan that we're going to do to implement to take care of it. 95%. It's all about taking action. So we could also ask, would this be agreeable to you if we do this? Is this the solution you were looking for? Will this make things right for you so that we can move on together? Right? Okay. So really what it comes to is all this in that we have to get out of the blocks quickly. Any sprinters, any track people in the room? Okay. If you run and if you've been in the blocks before, you know that those blocks are in place. They're designed to put you in exactly the right position to run an awesome race. Right? Exactly the right position every single time. Toes in the track, heels in the block, in the pedal, right? Hands down below your shoulders, neck and head down and relaxed. Right? Puts everybody in the same position every time you run the race to win. So install systems 
in business that allow you to get in the blocks every time with every customer and to hit the ball out of the park every time, right? So customer service is no different than running the race or training for any sort of physical effort. Next slide. So don't be afraid to ask tough questions. Don't be afraid to ask people to come back, right? We would appreciate the opportunity to serve you again, and I'll personally guarantee that you're going to be taken care of. Okay, next slide. So in closing, I want us to think about something here. So what do you dream of, business-wise? <laughs> so are there companies out there doing what you want to do? Did you used to be that company? Are your customers leaving? And if they are, you need to change it today. So imagine, plan, build systems and the company and the organization and the mindset of those that you admire because you want to be one of those companies that others admire. Right? I know this. Your business is worth it. You're worth it. You're not average. Never going to be. So ensure that your clients love you. And that the only way that's possible is to come closer together. If they do love you and they leave, you'll get them back. Because it's just that important. And they'll know it. So imagine today how you will free fall into success. How are you going to take the biggest jump of your life? and set records that your business and you personally never thought you could achieve because you just went out there and did it. So I think if you plug all that in and you work together, together you can and will accomplish great things. Thank you. <laughs>